In this video, we evaluate the hypothesis of whether a volcanic eruption wiped out the last Neanderthals using the latest genetic and scientific evidence. In a recent study, researchers redated the Neanderthal extinction in Europe and discovered that Neanderthals went extinct approximately 40,000 years ago, plus or minus a few hundred years after dating 196 samples of bone, charcoal and shell from 40 key European sites ranging from Russia to Spain. Meanwhile, the super-mega eruption of an Italian volcano was dated 39,220 years ago using charred wood. However, a Neanderthal tooth from Spy Cave in Belgium has been directly dated by DNA to no older than 39,150 years. Thus, the timeline between the Spy Cave Neanderthal and the eruption could be a difference of as little as 70 years. Given dating imprecision, this Neanderthal, known as Spy 1, may have survived the volcanic eruption or its immediate aftermath. Understanding how and when Neanderthals vanished is a hotly debated subject. Indeed, the Neanderthal remains from Belgium have long perplexed scientists, with fossil remains from Spy Cave yielding ages as recent as 37,000 years ago, placing them among the most recent Neanderthals in Europe. When radiocarbon dating identified the Spy Neanderthals as among the most recent to survive in Northwest Europe, Concerns were raised about the date's reliability. Researchers used techniques to purify Neanderthal fossil samples for carbon dating, removing any influence from modern carbon material that could make dates appear younger. Several sites in Spain, for example, that were previously thought to be some of the last outposts of late surviving Neanderthals, were dated much earlier in this study. Nonetheless, the overall pattern appears clear. The paper, titled Re-Evaluating the Timing of Neanderthal Disappearance in Northwest Europe, suggests that Neanderthals left the region much earlier than previously thought. The new chemistry methods used at Spy Cave and other Belgian sites are the only way to decontaminate these key Neanderthal bones for dating and ensure that all contaminants have been completely removed. Scientists discovered that a Neanderthal scapula from the Spy Cave, which produced very recent dates around 28,000 years ago, was heavily contaminated with modern bovine DNA. These findings indicate that the bone had been preserved using a glue made from cattle bones. In the new study, scientists used advanced radiocarbon dating techniques to date the fossil bones. They were able to date the Neanderthal remains by extracting a single amino acid using liquid chromatography separation. This approach enables scientists to reliably date the bones while excluding carbon from contaminants such as the glue used on the fossils. These contaminants have hampered previous attempts to date the Neanderthals because their presence resulted in dates that were far too young. Using a more efficient contamination removal procedure and ancient genomic analysis, Previous dates based on Neanderthal specimens from Spy Cave are up to 10,000 years too young. And direct radiocarbon dates on Neanderthals reduce the uncertainty for the time window corresponding to Neanderthal disappearance in Northwest Europe. Researchers wanted to re-evaluate these ages, believing that contamination could have influenced the estimates. The contamination could have affected these estimates due to the use of animal-based glues used during preservation 100 years ago. In fact, Neanderthal remains from Belgium are thousands of years older than previously thought, according to the study. Scientists at Oxford's Radiocarbon Accelerator Unit redated Neanderthal specimens from Spy Cave. The majority of the dates obtained in this new study were found to be significantly older than those obtained previously on the same bone samples, up to 5,000 years older in some cases. The Neanderthal skeletons discovered during excavations in Belgium were named Spy 1 and Spy 2, both males with cranial volumes of approximately 1,300 and 1,500 cubic centimetres. Researchers were able to extract DNA from Spy 94A, an upper right molar, dated directly to 39,150 to 37,880 years. In other words, the range is 1,270 years with a median age of 38,515 years, plus or minus 635 years. Researchers believe the Spy 94 Amola belonged to the cranium known as Spy 1, identified as a male through DNA analysis. Furthermore, 
Spy 94A is genetically similar to Goyate Q56-1, a female Neanderthal from the Goye Caves of Belgium, who groups closely with other late European Neanderthals. Researchers were able to extract nuclear DNA from the right femur from the female Neanderthal, who lived 43,000 to 42,080 years ago, indicating continuity of the Neanderthal population in the region before the eruption. Could the last Neanderthals have also resorted to cannibalism during the volcanic eruption 39,000 years ago? Neanderthals lived in the Goye Caves for millennia, where 99 bones from at least five individuals were discovered. This is the largest collection of Neanderthal fossils in northern Europe, but the condition of the fossils suggests cannibalism. The bodies have been skinned and filleted, and the bones have cut marks from being cracked to extract the marrow. The comparison of the Neanderthal remains to other faunal remains discovered at the Goye cave site, including horses and reindeer, indicates that the three species were consumed in a similar manner. Indeed, Neanderthal behavior was highly variable, including their interactions with the dead. There is evidence from various sites that the Neanderthals buried their dead, while other sites show that Neanderthals ate the meat and broke the bones of their relatives for food. Evidence of this cannibal behavior has been discovered at several locations in France and the Iberian Peninsula. As discussed, the last Neanderthals died out approximately 39,000 years ago, around the same time as the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption in Italy. New research suggests that the super-eruption of the Italian volcano, which may have played a significant role in the Neanderthals' fate, was even larger than previously thought. The most recent radiocarbon and argon-argon dating results are 39,220 to 39,705 years and 39,850 plus or minus 140 years using carbon-14. Archaeologists have wondered if the volcanic cataclysm which injected sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere contributed to the extinction. A sophisticated climate model simulates the environment following the eruption. Radiocarbon dating has revealed that by the time of the eruption, anatomically modern humans had already arrived in Europe, and the range of Neanderthals had steadily decreased. Work at five Mediterranean sites suggests that anatomically modern humans had also established themselves there by that time. The model indicates that temperatures in Eastern Europe and Asia dropped the most following the eruption. The last Neanderthal populations in Western Europe would have experienced a temperature drop of 2 to 4 degrees Celsius. But the study concludes that these changes were likely insufficient to trigger the demise of the Neanderthals. Scientists conducted a new study on the Campi Flegre Caldera volcano in southern Italy. The largest volcanic eruption in Europe in the last 200,000 years occurred approximately 39,000 years ago. This super-eruption may have contributed to the extinction or displacement of Neanderthal and modern human populations in the eastern Mediterranean region. To learn more about this eruption, scientists measured 115 sites for the ash layer it left behind, known as Campanian Ignimbrite. The data was then analyzed using a 3D ash dispersal computer model. The researchers discovered that the super-eruption behind the Campanian Ignimbrite would have spewed 60 to 72 cubic miles, 250 to 300 cubic kilometers, of ash over 1.4 million square miles, 3.7 million square kilometers. This is two to three times the previous estimate of the volume of ash emitted by the eruption. These findings indicate that the super-eruption would have released up to 990 million pounds, 450 million kilograms of poisonous sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This would have cooled the northern hemisphere, lowering temperatures by 1.8 to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 to 2 degrees Celsius, for two to three years, causing significant environmental damage. For comparison, Mount Pinatubo's eruption in 1991 reduced global temperatures by about 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. 0.5 degrees Celsius. The Campi Flegre super eruption occurred during the last ice age, which was already unusually cold and dry. The eruption would have exacerbated conditions for the Neanderthal and modern human populations in the region. 
Furthermore, the volcano's emissions of sulfur dioxide, fluorine and chlorine would have caused intense acid rain downwind. The eruption's argon dates back 39,850 years, plus or minus 140 years. The carbon-14 age of charred wood embedded in the volcanic ash has been calculated to be 39,220 to 39,705 years ago. The two ages of the eruption differ by centuries, implying that the dating uncertainties of argon or carbon-14 are underestimated. Nonetheless, the eruption's temporal proximity to the middle to upper Paleolithic transition, Neanderthal disappearance, and the start of Heinrich Event 4 drew significant scholarly attention. According to climatostratigraphy, the eruption occurred near the start of a millennial-scale cold period that included the event. Scientists hypothesized that the volcanic winter of the eruption caused the cooling event, which saw summer sea surface temperatures drop by 3 to 6 degrees Celsius along the Iberian margin and 5 degrees Celsius in the westernmost Mediterranean. However, high-resolution paleoclimate records clearly show that the layer predates the onset of the cooling by 700 to 800 years, refuting this connection. The simulations of the eruption show that temperature anomalies in Western Europe reached minus 2 degrees Celsius to minus 4 degrees Celsius in the year following the eruption, with peak cooling lasting one to two years. To assess the volcanic winter using climate proxies, significant effort has been invested in directly detecting the eruption's sulfate signal in polar ice cores, but these efforts have proven futile. Several large sulfate peaks near the onset of cooling have been tentatively attributed to the eruption, but a well-characterized volcanic ash find in ice cores is required to confirm that the sulfate peak is indeed associated with the eruption. Nevertheless, many investigators have hypothesized a link between the eruption and the disappearance of Neanderthals. Some anthropologists hypothesized that the eruption precipitated a biocultural revolution, allowing modern humans to outcompete Neanderthals. Yet, this has been refuted by stratigraphical evidence that the cultural transition from Musterian to Proto-Aurignacian, which indicates the replacement of Neanderthals by modern humans in archaeology, began below the Tephra level. However, there were a few small groups of Neanderthals, such as those at Spy Cave, that did survive for few generations. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.